She's a 27 year veteran of the hit news program Inside Edition and reported some of the most important stories of our generation. Please welcome to the show, Deborah Norville. We are doing well. Thank you so much for joining us. We hear you got an exclusive interview. Tori and I watched this front to back. The Tinder swindler, Jeff did too. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to tell us, does Simon Lviv, Lviv have any guilt for what he put these women through? Okay, it, this is amazing because this is I think the number 10 Netflix program right now and this is the first time that the so-called Tinder swindler is speaking out. We just did the interview the other day. He is in Tel Aviv, Israel where he has been for quite some time and um, we asked him, you know, are, are you are you the, the, the bad guy that you're portrayed to be? And his response was absolutely categorically, no I'm not. Uh. Here's what he had to say. They presenting it as a documentary, but in true, it's like a complete film made up movie. I'm the biggest gentleman in the world. As they call me the Tinder swindler, I'm not a fraud and I'm not a fake. People don't know me, so they cannot judge me. I am not a Tinder swindler. Now, never mind that he has spent time in jail for writing bad checks. He um, faced charges in Finland for a similar situation with three women in Finland, but there have been no charges with respect to the women that you've gotten to know watching the Netflix documentary. So we're going to start our interview with um, Simon today on Inside Edition, and we'll continue it on Monday because wow. there's Whoa. so much to Deborah, hear. I can't wait. Don't I let him swindle you, Deborah. Yeah, yeah. Deborah, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> We did it long distance. He's in Tel Aviv and he says he can't even leave his apartment. Ever since the documentary came out a couple of weeks ago, the media have been basically parked outside his apartment Good. building. He says he has not left his apartment oh, loves since it. the documentary started airing. Well, I think that man is a um, when you, I really do. I really do. It's a very technical, professional term. Deborah, when you first started, uh, the name Kardashian was associated with an attorney, not a cultural phenomenon. As a journalist, how did you find your stories back then? Oh, gosh, when I first came to Inside Edition, um, really the same way we do it now. We, we try to tune into what people are talking about. And frankly, it's a lot easier now with social media because we can just see what's trending on Twitter or Instagram or that sort of thing. But some of our best stories don't come from reading the newspapers because everybody's read the newspaper. Mm. Um, we've got a great story coming up today about we all had our COVID tests, right? The inside of our noses are just raw from all the PCR tests we've had. And we've got a story about a company that is accused of swindling people out of $140 million mm. in saying they're doing COVID tests, but then workers who's, who are at the company say, well, we never actually did anything with the test. We just put them in a garbage bag. So now they've been cited by two state attorney generals in Washington state and in Minnesota. Oh my so that's not a story that's in the newspapers, but we hear about it. We go and follow it. Hey, it's a good story. We put it on Inside Edition. Wow. Yes, the deep dive. That's yes. what we love. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Deborah, you've flown in fighter jets, hosted from a maternity ward. Now looking back, what was the most memorable moment of your career? Oh, wow. Well, let me just say the maternity ward was not by choice. I had my baby and they couldn't find anybody to do the show. So they literally sent the camera crew wow. to my hospital room. Um, but honestly, the thing people ask me more about is when they sent me to jail. And again, I did not volunteer for that. In fact, I walked in there, the toughest jail in America was in North Carolina. And I said to the ladies in cell block A, I said, my name's Deborah. I'm here because I don't think my producers like me. What are you in for? And so I kind of took the attendance on, well, this one's in for stealing from McDonald's. She doesn't seem too scary. That one set her boyfriend on fire, allegedly. So I'm going to stay clear of her. <laughs> That's the story that stands out because it was just so unlike anything. And also, I mean, you guys have been doing this a long time. I don't know what got you into journalism, but for me, it was I wanted to tell stories and hopefully be able to show possible solutions. Mm -hmm. That jail story is the only one I've ever done where I couldn't come up with an answer. Usually mm -hmm. get the experts to say this could work and this could work and this could work. I couldn't find an answer to the jail population going up 9% every year. I didn't see um, a, a way to fix when there was no stigma to being in jail because most of the women in jail with me had a family member who was in the same jail mm -hmm. at the same time. It was nuts. So that was a depressing story for me, but boy, oh boy, 
it was interesting. Wow. That's what we do here. Deborah, you're incredible. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming on Thank to you. chat with us. And for everyone at home, be sure to check your local listings and tune in to watch Inside Edition's interview with the Tinder Swindler, airing Monday, February 21st and Tuesday, February 22nd. Thank you, Deborah. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. Thank you.